Hi, Mr. Green here. In part two of 6.2, we're going to be evaluating international agreements for the protection of the stratospheric ozone layer. The discovery of the ozone hole led to a fast response on national and international levels. But even before government and international organizations took shape, the general public in many developed countries started to boycott products containing CFCs primarily in spray cans. The aerosol industry reacted quickly by changing to ozone-friendly spray cans and even before CFCs were forbidden by law, hardly any CFCs contained spray cans were produced anymore. The United Nations organization involved in protecting the environment is UNEP or the United Nations Environmental Program, which forges international agreements, studies the effectiveness of these agreements and the difficulties in implementing and enforcing them and gives information to states, organizations, and the public. One of these treaties signed under the direction of UNEP is the Montreal Protocol. It is an international agreement to phase out the production of ozone depleting substances. The signatures agree to freeze consumption and production of many CFCs and halons to 1986 levels by 1990 and to strongly reduce the consumption and production of these substances by 2000. Since 1987 the original Montreal Protocol has been strengthened in a series of seven amendments. In the protocol a distinction was made between MEDCs and LEDCs. Your application for this topic is to evaluate the role of national and international organizations in reducing the emissions of ozone depleting substances. As we take a look at the Montreal Protocol, you're going to need to make sure that you can justify your response with evidence. So why is the Montreal regarded as one of the most successful international environmental agreements in history? It is an example of the precautionary principle in science-based decision making. It is an example of many experts in their different fields coming together to research the problems and find solutions. It is the first to recognize the dif that different countries could phase out their ODS chemicals at different times depending on their economic status. And it is the first with regulations that were carefully monitored. I would like for you to go ahead and pause the video at this particular point and watch this video on UNEP summarizing the key aspects of ozone depletion. In 2019, the Kigili Amendment was added to the Montreal Protocol, continuing to help reduce ozone depleting substances. HFC, or hydrogen fluorocarbon, was identified as being a harmful substance to the environment. MEDCs agreed to provide financial assistance to LEDCs in helping reduce ODSs. New technology is being developed to be able, as an alternative to our HFCs. When you evaluate the role of an organization in reducing the emissions of ozone depleting substances, make sure that your response includes a named reference to either a national or international organization. Also make sure it is in this, these organizations are involved in the reduction of ODSs. Remember that whenever you evaluate, this means weighing the pros and the cons and make a determination as to which of these are most significant. I've also left a link here that you can find out more information on the Montreal Protocol. This concludes our discussion on topic 6.2 part 2. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thanks, and I hope you have a great day.